those who love one another and spread love among Muslims like the Sahaba did they will be on high pulpits in the day of judgment the prophets and the shuhada will envy them for that and we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank him and we beg of his mercy and we seek his light to see better what is right and do it and to see what is wrong and avoid it and we seek his guidance all the time every time we bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and messenger my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman undoubtedly today there is more knowledge than any time before including religious knowledge the abundance of books and internet and information is unprecedented no one can argue against that anything you want it it's there undoubtedly you can get any information including fatwas including you know things about religion things about history you can even find out about your ancestors you know you can do uh, you know uh, uh, genetic tech test for hundred or two hundred dollars they tell you where you're coming from what part your ancestors came from they will give you all the DNA information you need what diseases you might be prone to what you know risks you may or may not have all of these things unbelievable unprecedented knowledge and this is something that cannot be argued knowledge is abundant as a matter of fact at the tip of your fingers all of you through your smartphones which are now many computers you can access knowledge anywhere you are in the world having said that is it knowledge that brings people together or is it something else we have a lot of knowledge i have seen this is my observation when there is more knowledge and focus on knowledge and virtue is based only on knowledge you know there isn't much love and unity so this is a field study documented and you can do it on your own i visited places where people were very simple they knew allah they knew there is day's judgment they knew rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they fed more they donated more they built more they cared more they did this is a fact i went to india south asia I went to Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Africa, Europe, South America, you name it, and I compare. Where there is so much emphasis on love, relationship, and caring for one another, you could see more results. Where there is too much on the books and total dissociation of reality, you hear more of gossip and putting down people and focusing on you know trivial things that are unnecessary and you could see even the image of islam in that area or that community is you know not as good or even close to the one that focuses on spreading khair spreading love spreading help we need to ask ourselves we need to ask ourselves as we're starting now this new year islamic new year what made them different and what made those villages in pakistan and india and guyana and uh, lebanon and uh, you know palestine what made them much better than us in terms of care and concern they had little means we have a lot we have more ways to communicate, yet we don't stand watching or looking at each other. They had less means, but they had love. And when they met, when they, met they expressed it in the best ways. So what are we losing? 
Is it knowledge the way? Knowledge is good. But if it is not a useful practical knowledge, it can become deadly. Hence, there are many Islamic movements now. But a'udhu billah, a'udhu billah min, from many. Their intention is good, but they are destroying each other more than building things. Focusing on each other's faults. Focusing on so-and-so sheikh's mistakes. They are fighting, saying, Ana khayrun min, I am better than him. This very same thing shaitan said when Allah ordered him to do sujood to Adam. And he did not look at Adam being a creation of Allah that I should honor. And Allah has privileged Adam like the angels. You know, in Arabic, they didn't argue, they didn't think. Sajadu. Illa Iblis. He was thinking, why? The Imam stands up, please, brothers. We have a family has problems. Can you donate? Why is the Imam asking? We have uh, to collect food for Syria. We have to collect this. What are they doing with this money? We are having too much doubt of each other. We don't trust each other. We pray with each other. But that's why our prayer is not as good as their prayers. When Rasul used to say, Arihna biha ya Bilal, let us come together and pray to Allah. Everyone says something, there is no more trust. What does he mean? We're growing a generation that is doubting everything that is said. When parents out of love want to tell the children, stay away from so and so, they are asking questions. Everybody is asking questions. And Shaitan was the first one who asked questions rather than submitted to Allah. Why do I have to make sujood to him? Why? Do we have to understand? Wallahi, my humble experience, I find more love with simple people who may not know much, a lot, a lot. And as a matter of fact, who spread Islam anyways? Let me take you fly over the globe. Who spread Islam in Central Asia? What is now Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Turkestan, um, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, all the way to Uyghur country, to China? Who spread it? Humble fuqara, Sufi, simple people, all they know, Allah. They were just, you know, they were true Sufi, like the Ahlu Taza'a, Taqashuf, Zuhd, and they were people. They spread Islam. Who spread Islam in Africa? Darawish, Fuqara, from Morocco, what is now Algeria, and they went down. They mixed with people. They didn't speak no Fulani, no Uluf, no Hausa, nothing. All they had is a smile, a universal language of love. And people entered in Islam. Who spread Islam in the largest country, largest Muslim country in the world, Indonesia? It just came from there. 300 million people. More mosques than any other country. More universities and schools and hafids than any country. Subhanallah. How did Islam, they tell you some stories, Subhanallah. It was the language of love, not the language of Arabic or this. They loved Arabic. Not because of the language, because of the people who spoke it. We have to ask ourselves, what is that thing that we're doing which is making our work, whether our children or our neighbors or the society at large, so we have to revive the very language of love that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used. What did the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? All of you know what he did. First thing, لَمَّا قَدِمَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ الْمَدِينَةِ آخَ بَيْنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ This is the first thing before building the masjid. The first thing he did, he established a love relationship. Ummah, Ummah was born 1437 years ago out of Mu'akhah. You don't know him, he doesn't know you, and we make you brothers. 
You don't ask him, what are you from? Who your father was? Which tribe? Oh, you're related to me. Oh, you're from my country. Let's get together. Today, you're from my country. I'll talk to you. Then when I know from your country from a different tribe, I'll fight with you. And that's, you cannot marry my daughter. I cannot marry your, my son cannot marry your daughter. And, and vice versa. Allahu Akbar. So alhamdulillah, we have a good example. Second thing, what did the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before he built the masjid, he stood in front of everybody, including non-Muslims. And I remind you to remind people of his famous inauguration speech. Our prime minister just had inauguration speech. Our Rasul had inauguration speech, not from the member of Khitaba and Nubuwa, but a member of Dawa, of, uh, of rulership and government. His famous charter of Medina. Study it, learn it, understand it, apply it. I don't need knowledge that is useless. There is only the putting down people or making people categories or this is better or that or judging people by how long is the beard or how long is the hijab. I'm a, that is not doing anything for Islam. We need a knowledge that brings people closer to Allah. Remember very well this too, if you can remember. What is the mission of every messenger of Allah? It is my mission too, and your mission. Number one, to bring people closer to Allah. Remember that. Summarize Islam. Let us not adopt too much. Too much information is no good. Wallahi, it will be against you. We need practical as the... Some like to say, Ilmul Hal. Ilmul Hali wa Ilmul Ma'al. Ilmul Hal, knowing every situation where I am, what is Muradullah fiha? What does Allah want me to do in this? What is His Murad? What is His Maqsad? And I have to understand, I am in this situation. I am doing Hajj now. What am I supposed to do? I'm in a situation of conflict of interest. What am I supposed to do? I have a problem between my own children or between my own siblings or family problem. What does Allah want me to do right now? That is called the ilmul hal. Including how do I pray Jumu'ah? How do I make wudu? How do I fast Ramadan? How do I give my zakat? How do I do marriage? How do I do divorce? All of this is something that I have to know as a Muslim. Not in details, but at least in performance and intention niya. So, two things. Number one is to bring people closer to Allah. Number two, mission number two, to bring people closer to one another. Thereby, you have all the rulings of Islam. You have all the rulings of Islam. Your job in this life to bring people closer, including yourself, to Allah. Next step, bring people. Whether it's da'wah or reminding people or you know, spreading Islam or lecture or teaching or, or by your manners, bring people closer to Allah. So, إِلَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ أَحَبُّ الْعِبَادِ إِلَى اللَّهُ Who are the most loved people to Allah. People ask the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. خِيَارُ النَّاسِ The best people. قَالْ أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا رُؤُوا those who are when they are seen, ذَكَّرُ النَّاسَ بِاللَّهِ أو كَمَا قَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم Those when seen, they remind people of Allah. Am I and you, are you with that? Are we Muslims when seen in the world? I just came from uh, the largest interfaith conference, the World Parliament of Religion. Everybody was talking about some religion, specific religion, and I will tell you which one. They were so amazed. Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, you name every religion. 10,500 people. We just came, we just came a couple of weeks ago. Everybody loved the Sikh community. Everybody spoke in the elevators. They say, wow, amazing people. They remind you of God. 
Why? They had a booth. We had some Muslim booths. All they want to give is a Quran. I said, brothers, you give Quran, give some sweets. Give some baklava. Give some gulab jamun. Give something sweet. Some chocolate. Quran, Quran. This, the chocolate or the sweet has more impact than the Quran. They have a booth. They say, would you like to try our turban? To see how we... And people love it. Yeah, put the turban. And when they put it, wow. Can I take a picture for you? Here is a picture. Would you like to, during this four days conference, to wear it? Yes. I don't have to do my hair. And they give them aitr, some nice perfume. And for four days, they had langar. Langar to feed 10,500 people. Vegetarian food, dal, rice, palpaneer, and uh, some fruits, and lassi, mango lassi, and they feed. Like the Quran says. So you go, please take off your shoes, please cover your head, man, please this, women. I said, what is this, subhanAllah, Islam? Where are the Muslims? They came, they walked, and all dressed up in white. Nice. Turban white, they look. Man with beard, women with hijab and everything. You eat, they serve you, please have more, please have more. And then they come, please, can you tell others that all what you see here, food what's left, is going to go to the shelter. And all these new carpets and all this furniture is going to go to help people with uh, the homeless people. Thank you. And every 15, 20 minutes they come and tell you food. And then thank you. They say, no, 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 no. Don't say thank you. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you. No attitude with love and smile. Everybody, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created the heavens and the earth. They said, this is the people of Allah. Go give lectures. Go read the whole Zabur and Quran and Injil and Tawrat. It will not do. It is muhammad So bringing people closer to Allah and bringing people closer to one another. Islah. La khayra fi kathirin min najwahum. There is no good in their gatherings. They get together. People sit in the coffee shop, talk, talk, talk about what? Nothing benefiting them in dunya or akhir. He said nothing benefits except three things. To do ma'roof, anything that is good. Ma'roof is what is known to the world as good. Or sadaqah. We have our brothers and sisters in Syria now. They need food. They need clothes. They need, they need, they need. Subhanallah. We have too much. Our freezers are, don't close. F- filled with all kinds of meat. Moose meat, deer meat, camel meat. Forget lamb and this. That's on the bottom now. Everything is there. Pigeon meat. And we're not, and we're not full. We still want more. We still complain. And the people are starving and dying. Sadaqa. And people here, poor people. Allah says, no good in their gathering except ma'roof, sadaqa, aw islah in bayn al-nas. To reconcile between people. Akhzu shaitan. Say, a'udhu billah min ash-shaitan al-rajim. Forgive each other. This dunya is not going to continue. This is short dunya. You brothers, you've been talking, you haven't been talking for a year or two or three, haram. Call your brother back home. Say, I love you and forgive me. I made a mistake. Bring that ego down. Allah, Allah. Rasul Sassim swore by this. If you push yourself and humble yourself, Allah will raise you on the day of judgment above all the creation. What do you want? So we need to simplify Islam. Go back to the basics of Islam. And this is what Prophet ﷺ did. Then, of course, he told to non-Muslims, you're safe. This ummah, you can be part of it. Charter of Medina secures not only the freedom of living, of worshiping the way they like. No, Rasul ﷺ never forced anybody. Anybody. You go now see Catholics, Catholic church, you see priests. They have an Arabic, they have a pin that says noon. Harf and noon. Have you seen that, some of you? 
If you see Catholic priests, it's a, it's a protest. Noon, because ISIS, they will go to in Iraq and Syria, and any family that is Christian and Muslim, they will put harf in noon. Okay, it means Nasrani or something. So now in solidarity, because the Jews in, Israel, uh, in Germany, they were by uh, Hitler told to put patches on their, you know, uh, arms, say with the, with the uh, David star to distinguish them. That is discrimination. Our Rasul never did that. They dressed up like the Arabs. They lived freedom to pray the way they like. He never even interfered in their religion. Islam would be the biggest lie if we were to tell people, no, you accept Islam or you die. Never. That is not. As a matter of fact, I told you Africa, Indonesia, India. Look what Mu'ainuddin Chisti did in India. Read the history, those of you from India or Pakistan. Millions entered in Islam. He didn't have an army. How did Mu'ainuddin Chisti succeed? I went to India and I saw, and I asked and I read, I like to read history. I want to know why was he successful? What were the things? It was not knowledge or lectures or come or this or big YouTube videos. No. It was love. People were India is the second largest Muslim population in the world after Indonesia. How? We need to study our history and see why we're not successful, why we're not moving forward. In addition to, we, to the fact that we lost Barakah, there are other reasons. And also with our own children, we're struggling to keep them in Islam. We don't understand why they behave, why they don't want to do Salat. It does, for me, Salat is like eating and drinking. Why our children don't look at it the same way? What, what, what is wrong with us? What is wrong with the way we present Islam? Go back, go back, go back to the basics. And those people who are knowledge, knowledge is good. But knowledge is like medicine. The more you eat, <laughs> the more you get exposed to diseases. Other diseases and side effects. If you don't have a hakim to guide you, that's why they call tabib, doctor, medical doctor, hakim. He's wise. Hakim means wise. They call him the wise man. We call in Arabic or Urdu, huh? hakim. And that's why they say in Urdu, uh, Nim Hakim Khatar Jan, Nim Mullah Khatar Iman. You know, in Urdu they say that half half a doctor is dangerous for your life, and half knowledgeable person who doesn't know how to practice Deen, all he's a parrot, babaga parrot, and he doesn't know how to practice, he is dangerous for your Deen. This is this is wisdom. This is wisdom in Urdu, and you have it in other languages. So very important inshallah that we go back to the basics. دخل الرجل عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله أرأيت إن صليت المكتوبات وصمت رمضان وأحللت الحلال وحرمت الحرم أدخل الجنة قال نعم. A man came to the Prophet and said يا رسول الله listen I'm a simple man if I do the namaz the five salats and I will fast Ramadan, and I will stick to halal, and I will avoid haram. Will I enter Jannah? He said, for sure you will. You know, let us go back to the basics. But before that, let us see what did the Prophet ﷺ do. Read that chart of Medina. Third thing before he built the masjid, he cleaned that Medina. Aisha radiallahu anha said, Medina was a dirty, polluted city. Look now, subhanAllah, Medina is one of the cleanest places. Even when Saudis had the campaign against smoking, the first city that responded and had the most successful was Medina. Even Mecca, you see more smokers than in Medina, subhanAllah. Medina, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa cleaned it and he was cleaning, contributing to cleanliness of the streets. Even the garbage system, he established that. Now, we know Rasulullah is a Rasul, but we have to study as, as a leader. Well, that's why Michael Hart said he is the most influential man among hundred people in history. Why? Because not only he was successful in the spiritual realm, but also in the secular world, in the real life. And that's how the message of deen can make a difference if it's not confined in books but rather in reality. May Allah give us love of one another. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promised, Al-mutahabuna fi Allah ala minabira min nur yawm al-qiyamah yaghbitohum al-shuhada wal-anbiya. 
those who love one another and spread love among Muslims, like the Sahaba did, they will be on high pulpits in the Day of Judgment. The Prophets and the Shuhada will envy them for that. Allahumma arzuqna mahabbata fiqh, arzuqna mahabbata al-Muslimin, Allahumma نعوذ بك من البغض والغل ربنا اغفر لنا وإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رأف رحيم استغفر الله نعم. We should join those who are around the world saying enough killings enough bloodshed the Quran tells us that God Almighty wants peace. His name is As-Salam.